Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to War Tyler. This is what we're playing today and this game is especially awesome because my name is Tyler uh, and while it is spelled with a Y instead of an I, it's pretty close. We're gonna jump straight into some gameplay here so you guys can see what's going on with this game. I've been having quite a lot of fun with it. Basically what's going on is you have three heroes on the field at all time. I currently have five because I have a special card here that multiplies itself. So I got uh, three of those goblin dudes going on there. But in most case, you and your opponent, which is real-time PvP, by the way, have three heroes on the field at all times. Each hero has a unique ability, which you can use to your advantage when fighting your opponent. As of this recording, the game still is in early access, but I will be leaving a download link below if you want to check it out. So you and your opponent take turns moving your tiles around the board. This is very strategic, because depending on where you end up placing your heroes, the enemy has a few choices to make. And since most heroes Heroes can't counterattack. I've found the best strategy is to move your heroes in, in a way that the enemy can't directly attack you and they have to move into an attacking position first so that you can attack them. Of course that is a lot easier said than done with a pretty strict time limit as you can see from that burning rope down there. So it does get very fast paced and you have to think very quickly. Down there we also have the player ability. In my case I'm using the poisonous vines. It places three poisonous vines on the field. The opponent has fireballs, which does a certain amount of damage to all enemies on the field, or in this case, my heroes. The matches are over pretty quickly, so it keeps it always fresh. You get a new opponent. So again, emphasizing the nature of fast-paced, quick battles. Your advantage will come from learning what all your heroes do. That's one of the things I really do like about it, that there are a lot of different hero types with a lot of different abilities, and, and it can just get so strategic. Also down there on the bottom, if you look, you can choose which hero will come up next out of a selection of three, and then when one of your heroes dies, the next one will show up. And taking a look at just above and below the, the play board, we can see some skulls there. Each skull represents one hero, and when one of yours is defeated, you lose a skull, and when one of your enemies is defeated, they lose a skull. And whoever loses all their skulls first, lose. Also, if the game time runs out, it's just whoever has more skulls. If you both have the same amount of skulls, it'll go into sudden death. And at the end of the battle, depending on if you won or lost, you'll get more or less things. You'll always get some skulls, depending on how many of their heroes you defeated, and that can be used to open the dead man's chest, which can contain a lot of good stuff. But if you win, you'll get some trophies, you'll get some gold, and you'll get a chest, which does take some time to unlock. So, so that's the one little gripe I have is the chest system. I know some people like it, personally it's not to my taste, but if you're a more casual gamer and if you just want to play half an hour to an hour a day, you can get those, get like four chests queued up and then check on it every few hours, unlock the next one, start the next one. Of course you can play as much as you want if you're a trophy hunter and if you're going for that high ranking, then of course naturally you can play as much as you want. It's just for me it doesn't feel as efficient when you don't have any more spaces to hold chests and you just have to wait for the first one to get done before you're moving on to the next one. There will also be clans and tournaments coming later. As for now, they don't seem to be implemented, but those are features that would be nice to see when it does come out of early access. So we're gonna go ahead and open our dead man's chest here. You can see we have gotten enough skulls. Got a lot of gold, a couple gems which are quite valuable. Uh, we, we got a lot of the lightning mage cards, we got some vampire cards, and ooh, oh, I love the warrior. He is like my favorite card ever, and we can actually upgrade him now, we're gonna do that. Can get him up to, I think, level four, because we need four here, and then I think we need 10 for the next one, so that should actually work. Yeah, I got a little bit more hit points, a little bit more damage, and yeah, we can get him up to the next level, so that's really cool. I'm not sure if you're able to catch some of the gameplay of him attacking, but he has a giant area of effect, does a lot of damage. We can also upgrade our vampire here. This is a rare card. Uh, I don't really like her as much. Um, I know she can be useful, she can like uh, self-sustain, she can heal herself up, so we're gonna throw her in there and use her in a future battle. So yeah, learning what all your cards are doing is very important and will give you the advantage if you are just more knowledgeable than your opponent and can build a deck around certain heroes' strengths and weaknesses. Currently I don't have too much choice in my deck building because I am a beginner, but as you level up and get new cards and go on your way, then of course you can go a lot more in depth. We also have a free chest here which uh, happens every once in a while. Again, you get some gold, you get some cards, so it's all good. We can upgrade our prince, that's freaking awesome. He is also quite nice. He's kind of basic, you know, he just attacks, but he has a lot of health and a good amount of damage, so. He's kind of like a little tank slash bruiser, and it's always nice to have one of those in your team. But yeah, like I said, it looks like clans aren't quite available yet because even the top people aren't in a clan yet. 
but I think that will change when it comes out of early access. But yeah, I can imagine the goal for a lot of people is climbing up in the arenas, getting those new cards, building new decks, finding new strategies, upgrading your existing cards, experimenting with strategies, all that stuff I actually really like. So the strategy involved uh, a deck building, seeing what works best with one another, it's all really nice. But I guess there's honestly not too much else to say about it. Again, if you want to check it out, I will be leaving a link in the description below. Make sure to drop your thoughts about it in the comments down below, and also leaving a like would be greatly appreciated if you did happen to enjoy. Thanks, as always, for watching, and until next time.